let's do some art. So before I get started today, I have just a couple of things I'd like to mention. Both have to do with our art challenges. First of all, a mistake I made in the last lineup, I forgot to add this piece by Mika. Now Mika always plays along, she's a great artist and she was such a good sport in spite of my blunder. But here it is, I wanted all of you to have a good look at it. The second thing I would like to mention is about me being off camping by the time you see this video. So please keep sending in your photos. I may just not be able to answer you right away, but we'll do so latest by the weekend when I return. All right, on to today's project. As you can see, I have a really nice substrate here. Actually, my husband made this as he does woodwork. And I may have shown you some of his work uh, before in some of my videos. Anyway, most of his pieces are larger, as you can see. And this particular substrate just came out too small for what he was going to use it for. So yes, it ended up with me. And I want to add something to it that will fill it up nicely without covering too much of the pretty wood. So for starters, I will work on a piece of sturdy black paper, which I cut to size, and I use a white uh, stabilo just to roughly sketch out an animal and you will see in a moment what that is. So initially I had planned to use a bunch of my junk bits and pieces, packaging, kids toys, those kind of plastic items, uh, but I quickly uh, realized that those would be too big to fit into this relatively skinny and small octopus. So I went back to using broken jewelry bits charms and so on. I also added some small items from the handyman drawer, anything I could find that would work better in size. Now there are also included some chains, there are some hoses, uh, but I think it's pretty easy to see what I ended up using. My change of plan is definitely also one of the reasons why my desk is a bit more messy than usually with a lot of bits and pieces I never ended up using, but I didn't realize that until I was editing and I thought, wow, too many things to look at and to distract from the process. I should keep my desk cleaner to make it more enjoyable for you. Well, next time. Now, one thing I am using in this project, which I usually uh, try to shy away from, is a hot glue gun. But I had some very stubborn pieces. And you know, hot glue can come in handy as it takes hold right away. But man, I burned my fingers a few times and definitely prefer my E6000, if at all possible. Anyway, I used both glues together in order to make sure everything sticks really well because I don't trust hot glue too much. Well, I think it's time to turn you over to some music. I don't think you need my instructions in order to follow my process. It's all pretty simple and everything you need to know will be in the captions and I will be back with you in just a wee bit. Enjoy.
I of course glued everything down and now it's nice and sturdy and my little fellow is done and I really hope that you enjoyed uh, watching me put this together. Now I know that my process had a few breaks and a few gaps here and there but I just edited out all the repetitious stuff, all the boring bits and I don't think you missed anything important and I hope that this project will give you some fresh inspiration and give you some eye uh, ideas of what you could do if you want to work in the assemblage arena. So anyway, I paid special attention to the tentacles of this guy. I didn't want them to be all the same. So I picked all kinds of materials I could find that would bend easily. So I have some fabric bits, I have some metal bits, I have some plastic bits and I gave three layers to each of these tentacles and I intertwined them a little bit and that way they have a bit more dimension, a bit more life and I like the way they came out. I also added some small little tidbits for extra interest. There is a little bow over here, there's a broken friendship heart, there's a headphone plug, there's an arrow, we have the number eight, we have a zipper head, we have a bullet, there's a buckle and so on, just a few. Now most of the details are of course in his body. I again used a lot of my charms, I just have a lot of them. There are also broken jewelry bits, there are a few uh, little handyman items that filled in the gaps. And of course there are things that are recognizable. There's a boot, there's a dolphin, um, there's a giraffe, there's an elephant, a seahorse, there are some birds, crabs, there's an angel and so on. There's a badminton record and there's actually a little sign here that reads peace. So when I put this head together I was really glad to um, use the foil because at the time I wasn't sure how I would model this as I told you in the beginning. Uh, initially I wanted to use all my trash bits but it's just too small here to work with that in an effective way. So the foil came in handy and worked really well and I think has a lot of potential for future assemblages. Now the only bright color in here is of course the background and his eye. Now I did a little bit of research and this is as close as I can get it to look like the eye of an octopus. Now I purposely kept the rest of him pretty black because I think it's the best color to fit into this background. So here he is, he is all done and I'm glad it worked out um, to cut him out of that black paper. That was actually not a very easy step. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. It's a bit too tedious um, but for this particular background and for this particular animal it was the easiest way uh, to get this result. So that's it for today for me. I hope you had a good time. I wish you a wonderful week. I will definitely enjoy the beautiful Colorado mountains but I will be back here on my channel as soon as my next project is done. In the meantime please stay well, stay creative and bye bye for now.